Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Stamp and Chat Live. I am Gina from Gina K Designs, and I'd like to welcome everyone from all over the United States and all over the world to our show today. Well, today we're going to have a little bit of fun. And first of all, I want to thank all of you guys for joining us today, because I know we normally go live on Monday nights and Thursday at lunchtime. And this week, the schedule is all over the place. And somehow you guys are keeping up with us and hanging in there and coming and being with us. And we love you and we appreciate you so very much. Um, so for those of you that didn't join us last night, we know it is really late in certain parts of the world. So nighttime lives in the US aren't always doable for everybody. This is the new studio. We uh, gave it a test run last night and it worked pretty well. We had we found out that there was a little internet glitch in our area last night that made things a little bit blurry at one little point in the video, but we think it was that and not our equipment because the equipment worked flawlessly for most of the live. So hopefully we'll have good results today as well. All right, so today I thought in honor of Pride Month that I would do some rainbow cards. And I absolutely love rainbows. Who doesn't love a rainbow card? They're so uplifting. They're great for all kinds of occasions. Everything from a child's birthday all the way up to a sympathy card because a rainbow is definitely a sign of hope for um, good things to come after a storm, right? So I thought I would try to get a couple different rainbow cards in today. And of course, I've been doing lots of ink blending and I know you guys love ink blending too. So hopefully you're able to stamp along with me. If not, maybe you'll try the, these cards or these techniques a little bit later. So I'm going to start today with a piece of cardstock here. And then I'm going to cut it out with a heart die. Now, I'm not going to cut the cardstock out with a heart die. I am going to cut out a piece of masking magic. Now, if you don't have masking magic for this technique, you can use cardstock for it. The thing I like about the masking magic is it makes a nice tight seal around the perimeter of anything that you want to ink blend. So I'm going to be using the masking magic today for my cards. But like I said, if you don't have it, go ahead and use a piece of cardstock so that you can make these cards too. Now you guys may remember that last week I had done a card where I freehand cut a heart. Remember my butt card? It looked more like a butt than a heart. Well, um, if you don't have a heart die, you certainly can freehand this technique as well. But I'm going to use a heart die because last time I, I seriously did make a card that looked like a butt and... <laughs> I'm going to try to avoid that this time. Okay, so I'm going to trim down my masking magic first. So let's see here. This piece of cardstock is a quarter sheet of eight and a half by 11. So it's four and a quarter by five and a half. Now, this is five by seven. So I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to cut this down to five and a half. And I'm going to keep this strip. And then I'm going to cut this down to four and a quarter. So this way, this is going to fit right over my entire piece of cardstock. And then when I'm all done, I can cut this out using, um, you know, a, another die. And I'll do that in a little bit. But I am going to keep this strip for one of my cards today. Okie dokie. So let's start. Actually, let's start. Let me get my die cutting machine. So here we go. I'm glad you guys can hear and welcome to everybody who's joining us. I know a lot of people have no idea we're even here today because it is not our usual day. But hopefully you guys, people will pop on Facebook and all of a sudden the live will just come up in their stream and they will just jump on and say hello to us. Okay, so I'm going to place this heart right in the center, and you can tape it down if you're worried about it not being even, but because we're going to cut this down using another die when we're done, as long as it's pretty centered in the middle of this piece of masking magic, I think we'll be safe. So I'm going to cut this down, and this heart die is from the Master Layouts 4 die set. Now, you can keep this one. And you can use this on another card project. So we'll keep that for another time. And let me get my die cutting machine out of the way here. And put it back up 
here on the shelf to get it out of the way. Okay, you can see all my little um, slivers of cardstock from my plates. They're getting dirty again. I'm going to have to put them in the dishwasher, scrub them with a toothbrush and stuff to get them nice and clean. Uh, all right, so now I have a piece of cardstock here, and I'm going to put the masking magic right over that piece of cardstock. Now, let's see, can I find the opening? I know there's got to be an opening. Here we go. Here's the opening of the masking magic. So, for those of you who are joining us over here on YouTube, we certainly would love it if you'd give this video a thumbs up if you like it. If you give it a thumbs down, I guess that's okay because all interaction is good interaction, is interaction according to YouTube. But I might cry, but I'll do it privately. I won't do it here in front of you. And um, if you're watching on YouTube, feel free to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so you never miss another video. So, um, let's say you missed yesterday that I was going to go live, you'd get a little notification from YouTube that a new video was happening today. Okay, so now I patted that down nice and tight so that it's tight around the perimeter, and we're going to do a rainbow. So the colors that I've chosen today are red hot. Now, a lot of times I use red velvet, and that's totally fine. You can use red velvet. Uh, red Hot is a good one. Cherry Red is also a good one, but I'm going to use Red Hot. I'm going to use Sweet Mango. Another good choice is Tangerine Twist. I'm going to use Wild Dandelion. You could also use Lemon Drop. I'm going to use Lucky Clover. You could also use Jelly Bean Green. That's a great one. I use it all the time. I'm sure you guys are sick of me using it, so I'm going to use Lucky Clover today, but you can use any of our greens, Grass Green, Apple Mint, I'm going to use turquoise sea, which could be substituted for blue lagoon or sea glass or blue, um, blue raspberry. And then I'm going to use wild lilac. And you could also use wild wisteria. And I only say all those color names because I know not everybody has all the colors. And I don't want you to think that you can't do this or that you have to run out and buy something else just to make this card. You do not have to. Okay, so I am going to... Find my blending brushes. They're up here on my shelf, so let me get those. And I'm going to start with Red Hot. So I'm going to get my red blending brush. So I Karen, Karen yeah. from Maniunk. Oh my goodness, from Maniunk. Hi, Karen. Not far from my old stomping grounds. <laughs> she wants to know if your paper cutter will cut 110 pounds. Hers does not work. Really? Would like. You mean you're talking about this little We Are Memory Keepers paper cutter? So I'll give it a quick try here. This is actually even heavier cardstock. This is the Gina K Designs 120 pound. It is super thick. So we'll just cut this in half for a card base. So remember, um, one thing I want you to remember when you have a paper cutter like this, if you hold the cardstock here and you cut, it's going to be all fuzzy on the edge. You have to press down on this plastic guide. And then when you're cutting just ever so slightly, and I mean ever so slightly, push the handle that way a little bit. Not a lot or you'll damage your blade, but just a little bit. And that's where you're going to get that nice, crisp, clean edge. I don't know if you can see that. So hopefully that... Uh, that will work for you. But yes, this is heavier than 110. It's 120 and it cuts flawlessly. Okay. So back to my rainbow here. And uh, that was a great question. A lot of people probably have that question of that little paper cutter can handle it. So thank you for asking that. Okay. So I'm going to do a rainbow here and I'm going to do my rainbow on an angle. So I'm going to start with red hot up at the top here. And I'm going to just bring that color in. I know it looks like most of the red hot is up there, but see, I didn't want that blotch on my heart. So that's why I'm fading the color in. I got to leave room for a lot of colors here. Really get some red on there. Okay. So now I have my red. I'm going to go for my next color, which is Sweet Mango. So I'm going to get my orange brush. 
This is one of the nicest things about the 10 brush set, or even if you don't want the 10 brush set and you just want the brushes, um, to have eight brushes so that you can have a rainbow of colors. Okay, so I'm adding a little bit of sweet mango there. Now don't worry if it doesn't look perfect because you guys know that our ink has a smoothing agent in it. So once it dries completely, it's gonna look flawless. I'm gonna go back and add some more red in there and blend those two colors together. Okay, so do you use one brush for certain shades or how do you uh, use a limited amount of brushes with so many colors? So what I do is I have a brush that's for my reds. And so I will use this brush for red velvet, red hot, cherry red, lipstick, um, any of my red colors. And then I have a brush for my orange colors. So I'll use that for tangerine. I'll use it for sweet mango. I'll use it for tomato soup. Um, and I just clean the brush by taking the tidy towel, very, very damp, not wet, rubbing the brush all over the tidy towel and then rubbing it off on the cardstock to get most of the color out. Then you can you can switch between different shades of orange that way or different shades of red. If you wanna go from red to yellow, you're gonna to have to really wash your brush. So I definitely think that it's worth making the investment to have one brush for each color family. So reds, oranges, yellows, greens, and so forth. And um, somebody was asking about this. Yes, this is the little ink stand, ink pad holder by the ink stand shop. And I, I think Brianne is in here and she might be sharing information about it. I use these all the time. I didn't use them last night because I left them at home. I actually was texting with Brianne and I said, oh my gosh, I panicked when I realized that they were, <laughs> they were at home and I had to wing it. All right, so now I'm going with wild dandelion. And you can see, I spend a lot of time kind of going back and forth between the colors, making sure that I get the good blend, the good fade. So I'll add the yellow, but then I'll go back with what's left on that orange brush and I'll work that down into the yellow. That gives me the fade. You definitely want to blend. Okay, so there's my yellow. And now we're going to go for green. So I've got Lucky Clover here. Green into yellow is always scary to me because they are so drastically different as far as like one is so much deeper than the other. But we can do it. All right. So I'm starting up here a little bit. I don't want to go super heavy. There we go. You can see I'm using a light hand on this green. And it's not, you know, it, it's okay if it kind of ebbs and flows here and there. You don't, don't worry about that if it's not perfectly in line. This is actually more of what a rainbow looks like. You see a lot of cute stamps that are rainbow stamps, but each color is a separate bar. But in real life, this is more of what a rainbow looks like. It's a fade. Okay, here we go. So when this all dries, that's going to look flawless. Go back and add a little orange up here again. There we go. Okay. Now we're going to move to the next color, which is turquoise C. Grab my turquoise brush. I do have a different brush for my turquoise colors versus my blue colors. Um, because the blues definitely have more purple in them and the turquoises have more green. And so I do have one for each. And if you do ultimately get the full set, which is they're coming back in stock soon, once you get that full set, um, you know, it's got enough brushes for the entire rainbow plus two extra brushes for whatever you want. So I use the extra ones for like my browns and tans. And it's also good to have a brush for black. Have your own dedicated brush for black. Okay, I'm going over that. Get a little more yellow in here. 
and a little more green in there. Okay, now I'm going to finish that off. Let's get a little more blue up in here. I'm going to finish the bottom off with the wild lilac. Have to get the purple in there. Okay. <laughs> um, yes, I used to do this with daubers, and you definitely can use, do this with daubers. Before there were brushes, I did tons of ink blending with daubers, and, um, you know, you can get great results. You just have to practice a little bit. So there's no, there's no reason why if you can't afford the brushes, you're not ready for brushes, that you can't still make beautiful rainbow blends. Okay, so there's my purple in there. Just put that right at the bottom. That is such a pretty, pretty look. Get a little blue in there too. I love the way the blue and the purple mix together to make that a color very similar to our wild wisteria. Wild wisteria is gorgeous. Okay, so do I have anything on my hands? No. So now we're going to peel and reveal. And of course, you can keep the mask if you want, but let it dry thoroughly before you use it again. Okay. Ooh, look how pretty. I think it always looks a mess. And then when you peel it, it's just got that gorgeous fade. Whoa. Isn't that pretty? <laughs> And then again, like I wanted to show you, I showed some of you last night. Let's say you were going to use this a lot, this heart with the um, Love is All You Need stamp set. So then what you can do is you can just find your stamp set and just put your mask, you know, just tape it down onto the packaging of the stamp set. And then you'll always know where it is. And it peels right off and it's easy to use again. It's such a low tack product, the Masking Magic. All right, so now we have that. So let's cut this out with a die now. So, and I like to do the, the die cutting. Let me put my brushes back so I don't accidentally lay the cardstock down on the brushes and ruin my blend because you know that's going to happen oh and what's the last color after purple somebody had asked me that in another live and i didn't see it until later the color after purple is pink for me because pink will blend with the purple and it will be beautiful it'll make like a fuchsia and then you can go back to the red because the pink will blend into the red so if you're doing some sort of circular rainbow pink is the missing link between that purple and red okay back to the die cutting machine now we've got to figure out what we're going to cut this out with and i think it might be fun since we're using master layouts for let's see if, if we can cut this out using um the scalloped frame from that die set let's see if it fits this is the scalloped frame that comes in the master layouts for so yes that will fit it's going to be tight, but we're going to make it fit. Okay. Because remember, it goes all the way up there, so it's not like it's going to cut in the center. Actually, it's easy to line this up because the point touches one side and the two humps, the butt cheeks of the heart, they uh, <laughs> touch the top. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <clears throat> I'll never live that down, so I might as well just go with it. Ugh. What are the stars? Oh, you know, Facebook has added something called stars. And I think if you give the person who's going live stars, they get like a penny for each star. And I haven't really set up my stars yet, but I think that you can donate your stars. So I'm gonna to try to figure out which charity I can donate my stars to. And then if people wanna do stars, they can do stars. You don't have to. It's just something new that Facebook added. Okay, so there we go. There is my heart. Let's zoom in just a bit. Take a look at this up close. It's so fun. 
Okay. So now I did not find my washi tape. No. Thank you for asking. Um, it's got to be in here. Oh, wait. See, now that I looked, I just found it. Here's some washi tape that I have. I'll keep that close by. It was the purple tape that I couldn't find last night. I don't know where that went. So let's pick a card base for this. Um, so do we want to play off of that green? Let's see what a green card base looks like? I don't know. What do you guys think? Throw some ideas out at me. Here is a jelly bean green card base. And I know I didn't even use jelly bean green, but the thing about rainbow blending is any color, any color will work with rainbow blending because when you blend colors, you create every color of the rainbow when you go in this order. So there's jelly bean green in here, even though I didn't use jelly bean green because jelly bean is just a combination of a green and a yellow. And somewhere in that fade is jelly bean green. So do you like that? Or should we go something more red? Maybe we should do red hot. Let me get a piece of red hot just so that we can look at it together. I'll cut it real quick here. Let me cut a piece of red hot. I barely use red hot cardstock and it is truly <laughs> one of my favorite reds. I mean, it is the most vibrant red and maybe red would be a good color to do since it's kind of the color of love. So what do you think about that? You like that color? Okay, you like the green? Ooh, let's see. Um, and somebody said to try purple. So I will try one piece of purple. I didn't disappear. I just went to the ground trying to find something because everything's different here in this new stamp space and I have a little less counter space than I had in my other one so things are kind of on the ground all right let's look at the purple 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 yes it definitely would pop on black that is for sure it would all right purple everybody so pe more people like the green all right I think we're gonna go with the green. So what I'm gonna do is, because this green is a, a tent fold card, I'm just gonna cut a, um, a quick green one here and we will score it together. I need the right shape. Let me find my score, buddy. Okay, let's do this. So I'm going to score this at four and a quarter inches. Now, for those of you who have trouble scoring cardstock, you get cracks in it, make sure that you score. First of all, don't put your cardstock all the way up against this part of your scoring board. Pull it down a little bit and just make sure that it's tight over here. This way you can get your scoring tool into the groove. It's very hard to get it into the groove. It doesn't want to stay there. But if you pull it down, you get it into the groove. And make sure you use the side of the bone folder not the point because you can actually dig in too deep and crack it. So use the side and go down a couple of times. So a little, a little less pressure, but more times. And then you want to fold away from that score line because what you actually did was stretch the fibers. You stretch the fibers so that when you fold it over, you don't get the crack. So that may you may not have a problem at all with this kind of cardstock, but you may have a problem with our 120 pound white. That's where a lot of people say that they get cracking. So once again, making sure that this is free up here, close to the side here, and using the side of the scoring tool, we're gonna do several score lines, okay? So we're stretching that fiber and then when you fold it, you see there's no cracks at all there. No cracks. And then use the back of the tool to press the line in. And you can see that is a perfect fold with absolutely no crackage. <laughs> crackage, Tom. Write that down for our future dictionary that we're working on. Got it. <laughs> all right. So we're going with the green because that seemed to be the popular one. 
but I want to just put a nice big greeting on here. And one of the greetings I thought would be really nice is you are beautiful like a rainbow. So I'm going to put that going across on the heart. This is a very simple card, but I think, I think it's got a, a nice, nice feel to it. All right. So let's use this one. You're a beautiful, <laughs> beautiful. <laughs> Everybody loves the crackage, huh? <laughs> butt crackage. No butt crackage, right? <laughs> okay. You're beautiful like a rainbow. And maybe we'll put a few little sequins on this just to bling it up. Deborah wants to know what you used 120 for. I use 120 pound cardstock for card bases. It's nice and solid. It feels very rich when you give somebody a card with that, that, um, oh, what am I doing? I'm using embossing ink with that level of uh, cardstock. That's like very, very, very just nice and, and feels good in your hand. It feels rich doesn't feel flimsy. The other thing about it is if you put embellishments or you do lots of layering on your cards, that card is going to sit up perfectly um, and it's not going to fall over because it's not going to be, you know, front heavy, if that makes sense. Let's see if we got a good, oh, yes, we did. You are beautiful like a rainbow. I like that. Okay, so let's get rid of this stamp here. This little stamp set is from the Color My World stamp set, this little stamp. And I love this one because you can do rainbows with these as well. You know, you can ink right on these and they look like paint or, you know, kind of marker and stuff like that. And these little rings, they just, they're very graphic and very fun. So if you haven't gotten this one as an incentive set, this is a good one maybe for your wish list down the line. All right. So we'll do quick work of this one. Put this on here. Oh, you know what? My, my tape runner, my other tape runner ran out of tape, but I think I have a backup here. If not, Tom, you can run through the halls screaming <laughs> at somebody to give you a tape. I think I already did that a few times this morning. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now let's add a few sequins. I've got some disco ball sequins right here in this little dish. And I have my Connect glue. So let's add a couple little sequins. I can do one here. Do one here. So this, let me look at these and see what I want to do. This one right up here. It's a disco base. Oh, is that what you're playing disco? <laughs> you're making me want my big hair back. I think I put a few people to sleep last night. Oh, with the music? Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of nice. I want to go a little. Let's do that right there. Okay. So there's my little blingy card. Here we go. Okay. So I'm going to put that one aside. And then let's do... We're going to do another silhouette card. This time we're going to do it a little bit differently. So I was thinking about this while I was making the last card. Because <laughs> you know I don't plan very much. I don't plan at all. It's the story of my life. Actually, I did plan to be a rock star, but somehow that didn't quite work out. <laughs> So I'm going to cut another piece of masking magic here. Let 
me just cut this out quickly. I'm going to cut it at the five and a half mark. I'm cutting off the uh, screen. Oh, sorry, I'm not in the screen. Here we go. When I'm not in the screen time, just put it on you and play a song. Okay, so now I'm going to use an oval for this one. So I think, let me show you, let me show you my thought process here of the stamp set that I want to use for this. I want to use this one, Better Together, I believe it's called, or what is this called? Always on my mind. Somebody tell me what this stamp set is called. I forgot to label it and I threw away the, the thing. So I think I'm going to use this big oval. Somebody will know what the name of this is because this was a recent incentive and I know that a lot of you got it. So if anybody can help me with the name, that'd be great. All right, so I'm gonna use this big oval and yes, it's a stitched oval, but we're gonna go ahead and cut it out because it doesn't matter what's inside. We're gonna use the, the outside. Do we sell the tool that picks up the sequence? We do. I think it's it's sold out, and we've been trying to get them back in. Um, it's called a Marvy Jewel Picker. But, yes, we normally do have them. And we usually order, like, hundreds of them at a time. But they do, they do sell pretty quickly. I know that I just placed an order for them, and the order shipped. So we might have them in stock if they arrived. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to peel this. I think Tom did get that troll, didn't you, Tom? I did. Yeah. Better together. Thank you, Gloria. Thank you, Dale. Thank you, everybody, for uh, the name of the stamp set is Better Together. Okay, so this is very sticky. So let me get back here. I'm going to start at the bottom, lining it up the best that I can. It doesn't have to be perfect. Remember, see how I'm kind of not perfect on this side? Remember, I'm going to cut this out again so we can trim off the sides if we have to. Okay. So now let's do another rainbow. We can go top to bottom for this rainbow. I'll do this same combination. And I'll start here at the top with the red hot. Get some red in there. You're right, this one may have a bit of an Easter egg look. I am not 100% sure what's going to happen. So we'll see. Where's my stand? Here it is. Gosh, ink pads flying all around. There we go. Makes it much easier. I ended up buying three of these stands because I'm always blending at least three colors together at a time. So... Okay, we'll get some sweet mango next. Oh, look at me up in the corner. That's fun. So Tom, I was looking for a stamp set out on the floor earlier mm -hmm. and um, I didn't have my glasses, so I couldn't read. I was looking for a certain greeting and I couldn't read. So Lori let me borrow her reading glasses. And she's like, they're not very strong. And I'm like, oh, holy cow, they are very strong. They're great, I can really see. I said, what is the strength on those? Because I've been wearing like a minus 1.75, something like that. She said they were only a minus 1.5. And, but she said that they were good ones, you know, like Foster Grants. They were a good quality reading glasses. 
And so I've determined that it's not the reading glasses. It's not that my eyes are bad. It's that I have to stop buying my reading glasses at the dollar store. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> my dollar store reading glasses aren't cutting it anymore. Now I'm spoiled by trying on glasses that I think the dollar store reading glasses, I honestly think that there are two different prescriptions in there. They're like, I'm seeing like in two different directions. I, I don't know what I'm looking at. <laughs> They're horrible. So I'm going to have to invest. I did get a cute ones on Amazon, but they're not, they weren't like Lori, so I was a little jealous today of how well Lori was over there seeing while I was walking around needing Braille stamp sets so I can read what I was. I'm telling you, my eyes are so bad, guys. I don't know what's happening in my old age, but my eyes are just getting worse. Okay, so I'm going to go with the green next. <laughs> Stay away from the dollar store glasses. That's, you know, you can get the dollar store toilet paper if you need to. Because, I mean, come on, I don't really like that either, though. I'm a little picky yeah, there, too. Yeah, I was going to say, I'd rather <laughs> go with the glasses. Than... <laughs> oh, man. Hey, it wasn't that long ago that dollar store toilet paper was, like, a luxury. So take what we can get. All right, so there I've got some Lucky Clover on there. I'm going to go back in with the Wild Dandelion. I might not get my purple in here, but that's okay. It doesn't have to have the purple. kind of want it to have the purple, but this is poor planning on my part. And I might be able to eke the purple in there. I think I will. All right, so Turquoise C going next. Yeah, I'm going to get the purple in there. Even if it's just a little sliver at the bottom. Turquoise C. Yeah, Deb, check. Check, because if you've been getting your glasses at the dollar store like me, um, you think they're good. It's, it's like anything else, you know? You think what you have is okay until you try something that's better, and then you're like... What have I been missing my whole life? So, okay. I've gotten some at Walgreens, and I thought they were pretty good quality, but apparently I've been living, I've been struggling, and I didn't even know it. All right, so I got a little purple in there, and that's going to look good just to have it in there. Debbie said, try a yellow or orange base this time. A yellow or orange base? Okay. Yeah, I think a yellow. Yellow sounds like it would be really pretty. Okay. So here we go. Peel and reveal time. Just checking the fingers to make sure I don't mess anything up. Oh, Patty, maybe I should do that and go to my eye doctor and just get an RX for it. You found foster grants at Dollar General? Well, my dollar store does not have foster grants. Oh, that's pretty, huh? Whoa. Just like anything, you could just stamp on that and it would be really pretty. So what I'm thinking of doing here is I'm thinking I'm going to stamp this flower. I love the curvature of the flower. So I'm going to stamp this flower right onto that oval. And I'm gonna stamp it before I cut the oval out because I don't wanna stamp it and then, or I don't wanna cut it and then not have enough room. So I can adjust, you know, where I wanna cut it based on how this all plays out. Okay. Yeah, it does look like sunset at the lake. Oh my goodness. Rainbows, rainbows are so, so pretty. Your prescription ones, K, are better than the over-the-counter. All right, I'm going to take that advice. A lot of you guys are saying that, so I think I'm going to go with it. All right, so that's going to whoosh, right around there. That's the official sound. Whoosh. Again, let's get these brushes back. We're going to have time for one more card after this. Three cards in one live. That's crazy talk. 
especially when you have no idea what you're doing, right? But so far that not knowing what I'm doing plan is working out for me. So <laughs> I'm going to stick with it. All right. So this is going to be black onyx here. Is that what it is, Donna? One cent per star? Is that how that works? Yeah, I read a little bit about it because somebody was asking what the stars were all about. And I'm like, I don't, I don't know. So do you guys like it on this side? Yeah. We'll do the greeting on to the right. Okay. Oh, okay. This is like the closest thing to going to Hawaii for me. And I want to go to Hawaii so bad. And that looks like Hawaii to me. Woo, that is so pretty. <laughs> All right. Now we've got to find the perfect little greeting for this. Maybe we will use the better together because it is the perfect size for it. Let's see how it looks. We are better together. And I think I'm going to put it down low because I don't want to put it up here because then I feel like this is just a big gappy thing. I think having all of the words together, I mean, all of the images together and then just letting it breathe at the top is what I need to do. Okay. Alrighty, Black Onyx again. Here we go. I always hold my breath. You guys know what I'm talking about. Do a little bit more. Gently. There we go. Okay. Whew. <sighs> Sally said to please tell Gina her eyes are beautiful. Oh, that's so sweet. Thank you so much. That's such a nice thing to say. I appreciate that. Alicia and I were um, laying out in the sun one day a long time ago, and we were both staring at each other. <laughs> we were facing each other, and we were staring at each other. And I said to her, your eyes are really a cool color. And she said, oh, my gosh, I was just thinking the same thing about your eyes. We both have hazel eyes, so we've got a lot of different colors in our eyes. And when the sun hits them, they're very fiery. So... She got my eyes, and I got my dad's eyes. I take no credit. Okay, so now this we're going to cut. Let's see here. We could use that same frame, or we could go to Master Layouts 1. I think I'm going to do that, Master Layouts 1. So Master Layouts 1 doesn't have a decorative edge. It's more for plain card cutting, and I think that's going to be a good size here. The ink color for the flowers and sentiment, that was black, right? Black. That was just plain old black onyx. Okay. So that's looking pretty even to me. I'm going to hope for the best. When I smash this down. Okay. And cut. And then I'll do a black layer, and we're going to take the advice and go with the yellow card base. I think that's going to really just bring it all together. So there we go. See, it looks better when it's cut down a little bit. You get more of that, um, you know, it just feels like there's more color there, not so much edge laying around. Get rid of that edge. And then I need a black sheet of cardstock. Here we go. Let's cut the black panel. This is the same die set. It's just the bigger of the two dies, so we can get that little shadow layer. I'm going to do one more card. I don't even think I'm going to add any sequins to this, although I could. Maybe I will later, so we can get one more card in. Okay. We could always decorate off screen if we have to this out of the way. Tom, I might need a side table in this room. All right. Okay, so wild dandelion would be the, the yellow that I would choose. So let's cut this. I'm going to cut it on my big paper cutter that's underneath. <laughs> 
There we go. I'm winded. I had to go underneath the table because that's where I left the paper cutter. It's a bad place to leave your paper cutter when you're wearing flip-flops and you got a paper cutter under your feet. Should have learned that from Rena. She used to keep hers under there. <sighs> Master Layouts 1 and Master Layouts 2 are interchangeable in the fact that um, you could use the larger layer of, ma of um, Master Layouts 2 with the smaller layer of Master Layouts 1 and get a, a layered look. Or you can interchange the strips between them. Okay. So, okay. Welcome, welcome, everyone who's just joining us. It's great to see all of you guys. Oh, I did it. Okay, that was my fault here. Let's see if I can get rid of that. There we go. Okay. I fixed it. Okay. I just drop that on there with tape on it. Here we go. I, I do feel like it needs a couple little sequins just to embellish, embellish it. So we tr we're trying to do the master layouts so that as you collect the different sets, you can mix different components together. So we try to always stay a little bit consistent with having those thin matte layers um, so that they always look consistent. You know, you don't have one set that has a half inch border and another set that has a one eighth of an inch border. Okay, that's a pretty card, don't you think? Kind of like that. Ooh, tiny black hearts would be really cute for sure. Okay, so we'll play with that later. So we've got two rainbow cards so far. Now I want to do one more and I want to make use of those strips that I cut away. So here is one. And here, there's another one. I thought I had another one. Maybe not. Maybe not. Let me just look under here. Oh, yeah, here it is. I knew it was hiding. Okay. So what we're going to do with this is we're going to get another piece of white cardstock. Get my craft cardstock back here. <laughs> Good evening, good evening, and welcome. Welcome, everyone. So, oh, let's see. How big is this piece? Is this five inches? Yes, it is. Okay. So, this is going to work. I'm going to cut this piece of cardstock down to five inches. I'm going to just manually cut it down to five inches by three and a half inches. I want to do five, no, five by three and three quarters of an inch. That was almost scary. Okay. And now I'm going to put one strip going down one side and one strip going down the other side. And they can be uneven. And actually, I think I'm going to do them uneven on purpose because it will be easier. <laughs> this way, we don't have to think too much. So, the one piece is going to go fully onto here, like that. That's layering white. You're this is layering white I'm using, okay? And then this other side, I'm going to, I have to turn the whole thing because it's stuck now. I'm going to just block off a little bit of it if that makes sense, like that. Does that make sense? So I have a wider border on one side, a skinnier border on the other side. But I am going to move that because it didn't go all the way down to the bottom. So I have to be, have to be careful. You want to make sure that you get it all the way to the top and the bottom. OK, there we go. It looks pretty close. And I will go with it. Okay, so again, since we're still rainbow blending, oh, is this bothering anybody else's um, sense of being upright that it's not? <laughs> okay, I think that's good. So it looks straight. 
It's kind of straight. I wonder if my cardstock's not straight. Who cuts their nails right before live? I don't know if this cardstock is straight. So I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to just cut one more piece of cardstock. I can use this to cut words out for another project. I want to make sure my cardstock is super straight. Sorry for the delay. I'll be with you in just a moment. <laughs> All right, five inches. Okay, that should be straighter. It could be my masking magic that's not perfectly straight. You know, I, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna pretend that everything is cut perfectly because we all know better than that, right? There we go. That's gonna have to do. Because now it's getting late. That doesn't work when I say it. That's going to have to do. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Do it again. Fix it. Okay. I think I'm really putzing with this because I need it to be right. Because I can't show you guys something like this and then have it all ugly. Well, I mean, I can, but that that's grounds for unsubscribing <laughs> okay here we go this is gonna do it this is gonna be close enough all right back to my red so we're gonna do a rainbow bow going down again we could actually let's do it on an angle a little bit though we'll do it on a little bit of an angle because i do like that angle look okay so we'll start up here at the top, come in at an angle. I seem to have better luck on an angle of having room for purple at the bottom. And that's truly a me problem. That's not, that's just me. All right, now we're gonna go to our tangerine. No, we're gonna use sweet mango again. I'm sticking with all the same colors, just in case you guys wanna make these cards exactly. We're looking at all the same colors. You don't have to figure out which card used tangerine, which one used um, sweet mango. We're just going all the same here. Okay. Now we're gonna go back in with the red again. Bring it down into that orange. That creates such a pretty coral color, similar to our coral reef. Okay, we got two. Let's go with the wild dandelion now. While I'm doing that, you guys, what are your suggestions for a card base color for this one? We've done the green, we've done the yellow. What do you guys think? All right, wild dandelion next. Hello, hello, and welcome, everyone. Thank you all for being here today. I know that we sprung this live on you guys at the last minute. And we know that it's not always easy to make time in your day, and we appreciate that you're here. We love it. We love seeing you. All right. So now we're going to go to the Lucky Clover. So the next live is probably going to be for our next release, which is going to be next Wednesday night. We were going to have our release on Monday night, but we had a manufacturing delay. And because of that delay, we couldn't get all the products that we needed in time to build our kit. The products are trickling in now and it looks like we're gonna be fine for Wednesday. We need to give our team a little bit of time to actually assemble everything. Just cause the stuff comes in, it comes in raw product and you know, we, we have to give them time to package it all, get all the dyes on magnets, get all the cardstock card stock collated properly. So um, everything's a little bit later than it should be. And this is kind of the way life is right now with the manufacturing world. I don't know if you've tried to buy anything lately. I, I think I told this story last night, but 
I tried to buy a pair of shoes that were just like a beige shoe. I wanted to go just beige, something I could wear with anything. And they were out of my size in every beige shoe I picked up. And it's, I guess it's a popular size, but they said they're just having a heck of a time getting shoes. So, you know, everybody's feeling it. But, um, so we're going to go live Wednesday night for our release party. And then we'll do a Thursday lunchtime live for anybody that can't be there on Thursday night. And we'll do a new kit project on Thursday. So Wednesday and Thursday of next week. And that'll give us a little time early in the week to really work on everything that we need to work on to get the release ready to go. And we can help out where need be. So thank you for asking because I, I did want to mention that, but. Hey, did we retire vertical greetings? Yes, those are retired. Those are retired. We do have, um, I've seen some of the art coming through and I do know that we've got a stamp set that has some vertical greetings in it, kind of more updated with newer fonts and things like that. So stay tuned for that. Not in our next release though. Okay, so let's peel this off. I'm really making a mess. Okay, I'll peel this off. Do I have ink on my hands? No. Doesn't it look so much more well blended once you peel, <laughs> peel the stuff off? <laughs> oh, that's pretty. And as you can see, let me just go back now to these other ones. Remember, I told you that it has a smoothing agent in it. Can you see how smooth the blending looks now? I mean, you can't see any brush marks or anything. Yes, do the opposite order and get more blue and purple. Yes, I should do that definitely on another card for sure. Okay, so the stamp set I wanna use for this, this is an old stamp set. It's called Made With Love. But I love these butterflies because they're really open butterflies. And I thought it would be fun to stamp the, these butterflies and let some of that color come through. So made with love, let me get a, a block. I'm gonna do this with an, an acrylic block. Oh, where's the acrylic blocks now? Here's one. Will it fit on there? It will, okay. So I have not used this particular stamp set. Well, I did years ago, and then I don't know what happened to it. I have moved my studio so many times that I actually lost some stamp sets. So I need to ink this one up and test it first. So let me test it on this piece of cardstock and make sure it stamps well. There we go. That's pretty good. Okay, sorry, I'm out of the scene a little bit. I should know that. Okay, so before I do this, I want to decide what greeting I want to use. And I think, don't you think it would be pretty to do your beautiful like a rainbow on this one? I think that would be pretty. I really love this set. You add color to my life is really nice too. So before I stamp these, we're gonna actually stamp the greeting first onto this because I wanna know where the greeting is supposed to go and I have to make sure I leave room for it. So I'm going greeting first. See that little smudge there? Never fails. How about you add color to my life? We'll do that. This is a brand new stamp here. You gotta rub it. You add color to my life. And we're gonna bring it over to the side a little bit, over this way. Okay, now, when it's a new stamp, another little trick that you can do to make sure that it stamps well is you can get a little Versamark ink and you can ink it up with some Versamark. 
that makes it a little stickier. Then you can clean that Versamark off of that. And that's going to grab the ink much better. And it's a little tip. You might have to stamp it twice, so we'll see here. Yeah, am I still on the scene? Yeah. Well, that looks good. Okay. You add color to my life. I'll clean that later. She said as if she was going to really do that. <laughs> All right, now we can add the butterflies. So let's add... Let's put one right down here. Okay. Then let's get the other butterfly from that same set because it's got a side butterfly. And we could do the side view butterfly here. And then we could do another butterfly. Let's see. We could come in. Mm. No, it's too wonky. Let's do a straight one like that, like straight up and down. Maybe I'm only going to do the one. Got to play with it a little bit, you know, when you don't know, don't ever be afraid to use your image sheet and lay it on there to see how it looks because you can see right through it as if it was stamped. So I think like a straight up and down one right here will also cover my mess. And we'll go off a little bit. Like that. And then let's do one coming in from this way. These are really fun to color, this butterfly set too. It's really fun because it's got so many open holes. It's great to emboss in black and then watercolor in there. Okay, I'll just do one up here. There we go. All right, now once we get this onto a card base, hey, what was the color? What color did you guys decide? Did you see it, Tom? A lot of black, a lot of white. White, and okay. In between. Okay, so you know that I got to do the black layer. So this was three and three quarters by five. So I'm going to go three and seven eighths by five and one eighth. All different colors. All different colors? Okay. All right. Look at that. That is where my issue lies. <laughs> All the issues of the world <laughs> are because I've got a big streak of black ink on my finger. Ugh. Sorry, I'm cleaning my hands and complaining off to the side here. And now I'm rubbing it on my jeans. Okay. A lot of purple. A lot of purple? Okay. All righty. Let's get this one on here first. Okay, that's crooked, but I'm leaving it. All right, so let's look at blue and purple. Oh, gosh. So blue, I mean, sea glass is a pretty blue for this. There's sea glass. And then here is purple, wild lilac. Now I'm gonna be honest with you. I love the purple. I really love the purple, but because purple is down here at the edge, I feel like you kind of lose the purple, you know, like you lose it because the whole thing becomes purple and you don't get to see that part of the fade. Where if you pick a color that's more inside the card, like not red or not purple, then 
you see the purple, the purple pops out. Does that make sense to you guys? So I think I'd like to see that now. Uh, let me get turquoise C though, because that is a little bit of a deeper, not much, but a little deeper. So you can see. So I really like that. I think that that because this goes all the way to the edge, I think we should go with um, either this one or the sea glass. And, you know, now that I see it with the turquoise sea, I think I like the sea glass better myself. So I'm going to do a tent style card. So I need to get my big paper cutter up here. Ooh. Sorry for this mess. Let me just cut it real quick. There we go. And then we will score it. I can't believe I made three cards and I have 50,000 things all over <laughs> my table here. <laughs> Who's giving me a thumbs down? What's going on? You don't like the, the sea glass? <sighs> well, that's the trouble with everybody's going to have a different opinion, right? Well, here's what I want to I, I want to do. I know a lot of you guys have different opinions of what color I should do, and I would encourage you to make one and use the color that you think would work best. And let's put them all in our Facebook group so we can all admire each other's choices. I think that would be really fun. All right, so I ended up going with sea glass. I know Laura, no sea glass. I did sea glass. <laughs> um, but let's lay these cards out together and you guys can see the different rainbow blends we did today. Let's do that so you can see that a little better. There we go. So those are my three finished cards. All right. I know everybody has a different opinion. I hope that even if I didn't choose the one that you guys wanted, that you wanted, that you still won't unsubscribe and leave me forever because that will make me cry. <laughs> All right. Well, guys, I had so much fun with you today. I hope you had fun last night and today. It's been, um, it's been quite a crazy time for us moving everything from our home studio into this studio. Uh, for those of you that didn't hear yesterday. The only new thing that we ended up getting was a new mixing board. Um, everything else, all the lights, all of this was from our old classroom in our old building. So I just moved it in here and kind of decorated it a different way. You can see if I back out just a little bit, some of the decorations that I have up top here. A lot of people are asking me about this sewing machine. This is a little Janome So Mini sewing machine, and I love it for sewing on cards. It's the perfect little paper crafting machine. I don't know if they make it anymore, but I know Singer has a little one too. I like using that as opposed to my good fabric sewing machine because I don't want to damage that because I, I need to alter too many clothes for this short frame that I have here. So um, this has been a crazy week and you guys hung in there with us. You found us anyway, even though we weren't able to go live on Monday and we're not able to go live tomorrow. Thank you for being here. We'll be back next Monday night with a brand new release starting at 7 p.m. Central Time. We'll be doing sneak peeks. I guess we'll start the sneak peeks this weekend. So look for sneak peeks in our Facebook group. Also, if you're watching on YouTube, I'll post high quality photos of all of these cards on my community tab on my channel. And I'll also be posting high quality photos in our Facebook group and on our Facebook page. I also put them on our Instagram. So there's gotta be somewhere where you can find them. All right, guys, we're gonna see you next Wednesday. In the meantime, stay safe, stay healthy. I love you all so very much. And I'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye.